Well, in that is extreme case, multi-core is clearly dead, because if I give you twice as many cores and then tell you that you can only turn half of them on, you know, there was not really a benefit to giving you twice the number of cores. Um, so that's not quite true what's happening in the mobile market, right? When you see multi-core <coughs> ARM processors, yes. you will not see the Mac at all the time. That's right. And Mike, Mike Mueller, actually, uh, I mean, <laughs> he has a talk that points this out. He talks about dark silicon and, and in that space. Right. It may, may well hit, uh, hit worse than... than the <laughs> Intel i7 has the capability of running one core faster yes. than the other ones are not yes. running. Yes. So and, I can and, and, and of a power situation. That, yeah, so, so, so tur turbo, you know, so actually, actually that, that also goes back to the, the point a little bit about, you know, introducing a next generation processor and making sure that you run your old oh, workloads no worse, right? So if you have turbo mode kind of uh, uh, capability where if you turn fewer cores on, you know, you can run them a little bit faster. Of course, it's not linear, right? But, but, but yes, then, then maybe you, to some extent you can have your cake and eat it too, you know, if you have... Um, sort of old applications that might not be so parallel. Uh, you run it with fewer cores and you run it faster and uh, with, with uh, a bit more throughput oriented applications to try to, to use all the resources. So that will help a little bit and may, may help, you know, that kind of thing might help enough to, to kind of compensate for, the, for this, this fact that, you know, on, on at least the, the linear scale, it looked like it would be dropping gradually from, say, 4 to 3 gigahertz, you know, past, uh, past 32. Um, so, so you know, what what are the options? Uh, you know, what what can we do about it? Well, the, 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 of course, you know, we can we can accept the slowdown um, and say, well, we'll deal with it in the in the switching factors of transistors. So, what we'll do is we'll make uh, bigger caches instead of use the transistors for things that are hotter, like uh, processor cores. Uh, so that's that's certainly possible. Um, it, it it does have a, a consequence, though. You know. It, it does not appear that you can get the kind of uh, rate of performance improvement that we've historically had, you know, if this is the path that we follow. And, uh, you know, I, I, um, you know I, I, I somewhat believe that the, that the, the, the size of our industry, and in particular the, our, our, our part of it, you know, is, is somewhat proportional to what we deliver. <laughs> so if, if say, we, we uh, you know, we, we have the rate of improvement uh, that we deliver, then, then maybe our industry is, is, is going to be half as big, right? So, so, so that it, it, it would work, but it's not, it's maybe not the best thing that we can do. The, the second one is, is lighter weight threads only, and that has the, the downside that, that, uh, that it's going to be difficult for people to, uh, to migrate onto these newer machines, uh, even though there does seem to be plenty of room for us to continue to, to uh, improve efficiency and performance. Of course, we can have approaches that that mix them, you know, which is kind of a next step after this turbo mode kind of idea, uh, where uh, you know you turn certain things on when uh, when you have more throughput oriented problems and, uh, and, and and other cores when uh, when you have uh, more more single thread oriented applications. And and the last one is you can you know add accelerators. You you can uh, you can specialize. Uh, and and the uh, the fundamental fundamental reason underneath that is that you know you can anticipate that more specialized circuits are, are more more efficient and you know there, there are plenty of examples of, of circuits that, that have been specialized that, that are indeed you know many orders of magnitude uh, more efficient than, than taking that application and running it on, the, uh, on a single machine uh, on, the, on the general purpose processor so in, in that context uh, you know it's, it's it's worth taking a look at uh, at cell and other hybrid uh, uh, systems, you know, as a way to, to, to continue to get more performance. So note that, you know, I, I think that, that, that this, just as multi-core kind of came, really came into its right in 2005, you know, I, I, I actually made this chart the first time a few years ago, and I said, well, 2015 is maybe about the year that we would be broadly forced to go here. Now, at the same time, I would say that with announcements from, from AMD, the fusion architecture, you know, beginning to pop up more as a low-end uh, kind of thing with, with uh, uh, you know, with, with, with Intel, the, the, the Sandy Bridge and graphics integration, and of course, the uh, NVIDIA Tegras and, and, and others that are uh, the mobile space. But if this, if anything, you know, this, this might be happening uh, a little bit. 
um, you know, it's not it's not a new concept. It was not a new concept that sell uh, uh, either. You know, here are a couple of other examples of things that we, you know, like as design links with integrated power processors. We might not have thought about that as a heterogeneous systems, but you could certainly realize one on a, on a substrate like that. Uh, kilo core was an example of going to the extreme of you know, very many small cores. Um, and then, and then the, the cell, uh, the cell processor. Oops. Yeah. So, so let, let me not uh, use the, the next slide. But so, so uh, <coughs> you that have heard me talk before know that, that I always do this same thing here. So, so, so that there was only, in, in my opinion, only one idea of of of, uh, of, of crucial importance to to cell. And. And the, the best way I can explain it is, uh, you know, is just to, to talk about, you know, what the world would be like if if I was going to uh, do construction of something uh, by, uh, by by sticking my hand out and, and for example, saying hammer, and, and making it the job of, of Home Depot to deliver the hammer in my hand. So imagine you are going to build something. I say hammer. Okay, oop, there it is. Right? Stick my hand out. Wood. Ah. I have wood, nails. <laughs> okay, now I can do something, right? So, th this is essentially the way we, we operate uh, microprocessors. You know, I say log this, log that. You know, add it up. I, I'm I'm not going to worry about where it comes from, right? I just okay. now in, in in the real world, if 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 we did things this way, you know, Home, home Depot would be a very very large uh, company, right? And there would be a, a Home Depot person. You know, in, in the corner some here with their stack of stuff, you know, trying to supply me. And you'd have another Home Depot person, you know, on the floor with a bigger stack of stuff. And of course, that's what we see in microprocessors. We see these lots and lots of real estate and power being devoted to these to these cash hierarchies. So Cell said, well, okay, you know, just like in the real world, we don't do it this way. Uh, it, it'd, be, it'd be nice, be convenient, but um, you know, we, we don't need uh, a lot of people. Uh, serving us. Um, what, what, what we do in the real world is we, we write a shopping list. You know, we go out, we get the stuff that we need, bring it together, then do our project. And then, and then maybe do the reverse. So, so that's, that really is, is the, the, one, the, the one idea of, uh, of, of Note uh, behind the, the cell uh, microprocessor. So in, instead of, so, so the, the global architecture of cell is sort of completely conventional, the same. As a as a uh, as, as another uh, shared memory multi-core processor, so if you would replace these SPEs over here uh, with, with more more copies of the of the power core that we would have, that we had, um, you know you would have had a, a, a dead ordinary uh, SMP. But instead, what we did is we added processors that didn't yeah, the processor itself didn't operate out of global shared memory; it operated out of a local store, uh, which is like your your. The local storage area for, for stuff. And then we had uh, the memory flow control unit, uh, whose job it was to, to get stuff from, from global memory, get it into this local memory, and, uh, and prepare it for the process. Um, you know, this also, it, it, it allows you to get many things in flight at relatively low cost, right? So if you have a, a conventional microprocessor, um, you know, you, you can you can get your your first load, of course, going without speculation if you're missing the cache. But it's not you're, you're not if if every time you have to wait for this round, round trip to memory, your program runs horribly inefficiently, and therefore you have to sort of guess ahead and bring things in. Right. So to bring that Home Depot analogy, you know, it, it clearly wouldn't work if that supply chain didn't try to guess ahead at, at what you needed. Um, now, in the case of the cell processor. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's normal for an application to say, okay, I need these thousand things. And then, you know, those go out in the memory subsystem, get fetched. They can all be fetched in parallel. You wait once uh, and, and then go ahead. Now, now it, it, the actual physical realization, you know, there's, there's a, per estimate some 16 uh, fetches in flight, you know, for the chip about 100 of them. But this could be extended to, to things that have memory latencies in the, in the microseconds without, without much of a um, so it's it's leveraging locality that that, that really, uh, whoops, really helped out there, and you know it paid off. And so um, you know of course you'll, you'll 
for now, you'll, you'll have to take my word that, that you know, each of these SPEs uh, delivered performance uh, comparable to you know, conventional cores on, on, on many applications. I'll, I'll show you some examples later. Uh, at an amount of resource, and this is, this is you know, as close to scale as I, I could get it. Uh, and so if you look at the red box here, you know, for about the amount of real estate for a chip that you need uh, for a single core, you know, whether it be IBM, Intel, or AMD, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you could have about six, six SPEs. So, so that's, you know, that's a significant uh, fraction of uh, performance improvement. And then the fact that this is really two processors, one that fetches the data and one that executes on the data, actually, in many cases, gave us uh, another performance boost. So, so, so there are a significant number of examples where we, where we got a, an order of magnitude more performance itself, you know, for the same amount of uh, silver resources. Um, and you know, we've we've done uh, ma many things with the cell processor. We've, um, you know, for the uh, we've taken it through three generations of technology. One, one little, you know, thing that that is that is interesting here is is that. Um, you know, of course, you would hope for a, a factor of two. You know, every time you go to a new technology, you know, we got something closer to to, uh, to a factor of two over two generations of technology. And that's, of course, you know, you, not, not everything in your chip uh, scales perfectly. Particularly, uh, the I/O servers end up uh, taking a, a larger amount of resources. So this is uh, from a, I think from I, I believe it was an ISSC paper by by Osama And uh, you know that allowed uh, Sony to uh, to go from, from the PlayStation uh, to, to the PlayStation Slim, for example. Uh, Toshiba has a, a line of uh, uh, high-end televisions, including their uh, 3D televisions that use uh, use cell technology. Uh, so so they they've made some use of this as well. <coughs> they can synthesize 3D out of a 2D source. And they can, and, and the first time I heard that, I, I didn't believe that that was reasonable. But yes, indeed, they, they, can, they can take a 2D movie and, uh, you know, basically, if, if, if you walk like this, right, stuff in the background moves faster than, than stuff in the foreground. So you can use these kind of cues, even in a 2D image, to, to, to recreate a 3D image. And then my understanding is that they do some actual object recognition, uh, you know, along with that. Because they also do 2D to 3D with still pictures, so they have to. Use right, and, and in that case, of course, you have to you, you have to kind of know a little bit what you're what you're looking at. Yeah. Um, so 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 so. Oops. Um, so 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 yes, so those are uh, in, interesting examples. Um, and another one that that I, that I, I thought was was very nice was. Uh, um, and, and this was early days. Uh, they, they had a, a camera trained on uh, on a person, and, and were able to to measure like a thousand points in their face, and then create a, sort of a real time avatar, very very similar to, to what is happening right now for, uh, with, with say the, the connect or the, the, the move controllers or things like that in games. A uh, bunch of applications in, in medical. Uh, there's a, an ultrasound machine in. Uh, in I, I don't know if it's in the U.S., but it's uh, it is in Japan. Um, you know, it it, uh, it, it does the, the processing for the, the move controller, for example. Uh, it was used by one team in the, uh, in the DARPA Grand Challenge for some uh, for some visual processing, um, and it, it was used by IBM in a in a host of uh, of systems, and uh, and also uh, by by other companies that, that we supplied the chip for. Uh, with, with I guess you know one one of the Best known uh, uses of it in the uh, in the Roadrunner supercomputer at Los Alamos uh, that uh, that achieved uh, was the first one to achieve a, a, a petaflop on the uh, on the on the top 500. 